good morning, good afternoon to all who are watching this presentation. My name is Diane Conceição and I will present the work entitled Lightning Performance Calculation of Transmission Lines Considering a Detailed Modeling of the Tower Geometry Distribution. This presentation consists of five parts. Introduction, Case Study and Modeling Guidelines, Conventional and Proposed Methodology for Line Performance Estimation, Results, Summary and Conclusions. Direct lightning strokes to transmission line can lead to severe overvoltage across the line insulators, causing unscheduled interruptions. Several methods for estimating lightning voltage rates have been developed and are documented in brochures and standards. They all agree that the problem presents a series of uncertainties and that are often used as a justification for simplifying the transmission line performance calculation method. A simplification typically adopted in the calculation of transmission line performance corresponds to the consideration of only the so-called dominant or typical tower geometry. This simplification, however, can lead to deviations in the estimation of the line voltage rate, especially in case where the line is composed of more than one type of structure. In recent years, knowledge has improved in several important areas for the calculation of transmission line performance. For instance, in the characterization of soil and grounding electrodes for impulse currents and in obtaining bare estimates for the lightning ground flash density. In addition, due to regulatory agency requirements, the transmission line design documentation is become more detailed. In this context, there is a trend to reduce the above-mentioned uncertainty of the input data, allowing more detailed transmission line performance calculations. This work proposed a methodology to estimate the transmission line performance that considers not only the most frequent tower geometry, but sets of typical tower geometries along the line. The proposed methodology is applied to a real 230 kV line, and the results are compared with those obtained using the conventional methodology. A 230 kV line with 220 towers is considered in simulations. In the proposed methodology, three typical towers were considered between self-supporting and guided structures, of which about 40% are guided towers. And approximately 60% are self-supporting structures, which about 45% suspension towers and 15% anchor towers. All simulations presented in this paper have been carried out in the Alternative Transients Program, ATP. The transmission line towers are modeled as a lossless single-phase line. The surge impedance of this line is calculated with the revised Jordan's formula. Considering that the tower can be represented by N vertical conductors and that they are connected at the current injection point, it is possible to represent the whole multiconductor system as a single transmission line with equivalent surge impedance given by the formulas. The following are the models implemented in the ATP for each type of structure analyzed by the work. On the left, is represented Gaia Tower Geometry, an ATP tower model on the right. Each Gaia ride was represented as a single vertical conductor, whose surge impedance was calculated using the expressions shown previously. The equivalent impedance of the four Gaia wires was determined by dividing that of a single wire by four. The equivalent impedance of the Gaia wires is placed in parallel with the mass surge impedance at their connection point as indicated in the tower model. 90 of the 220 towers are guided as structures. In this slide, it is possible to observe on the left suspension tower geometry and the ATP tower model on the right. The tower was divided into five sections, each one represented by four conductors. 
This was made to consider the variation of the cross-section of the tower with position, which changed the mutual surge impedance as a function of height. 100 of the 220 structures are suspension towers. On the left, it is represented anchor tower geometry and the ATP tower model on the right. The same modeling principle used for suspension structures was adopted due to the similarity between the towers. 30 of the 220 structures are anchor towers. The current waveform of figure has been adopted in its simulations. This waveform closely reproduces the main medium parameters of negative downward lightning first stroke current measured at Monson Observatory. This waveform is modeled as the sum of Heidler's function. The first stroke current is characterized by a peak value of 31 kA and a virtual front time of 30.8 microseconds. Tower ground system of the towers were defined in the design stage according to the measured resistivity values. The low frequency ground resistance were calculated from the effective tower perimeter for each configuration. Impulse impedances were then estimated using the impulse coefficient. The impulse impedance values were ordered in ascending order and grouped into 10 sets. The distribution obtained is presented below, together with the average values associated with each set of impedances. In this figure, it is represented the impedance distribution obtained for the entire transmission line, where each set includes 22 structures, and that is used in the conventional methodology, that will be detailed in the next section. The same procedure but specifically considering the suspension anchor and guide towers was carried out and it is presented in the next slides. Here it is represented the tower foot impedance distribution considering only the suspension towers. Each set includes 10 structures. In this slide, it is represented the tower foot impedance distribution considering only the anchor towers. Each set includes three structures. In this figure, it is represented the tower foot impedance distribution considering only the Gaia towers. Each set includes nine structures. The distributions referring to the suspension, anchor, and Gaia towers are used in the methodology proposed by this work, and which will be detailed in the following section. In the conventional methodology, only the dominant structure of the line is considered, in this case, suspension tower. The impulse impedance distribution of the whole line is considered. For each impulse impedance value associated with a given section K of the line containing any towers, the resulting lighting over voltage across insulators are calculated using ATP. The lighting current is injected at the top of a central tower. A pair of adjacent towers is included in simulations to consider the effect of overvoltage propagation along the line conductors and also the reflections from the adjacent towers. Applying the disruptive effect method, the critical current associated with a given section K of the line is determined. The backflash over rate of each section is determined from the expression, where NG is the ground flash density and W is the attractive width of the line and is given by the expression. The line backflash over rate is given by the expression, where N is the total number of towers of the entire line. In the proposed methodology, the entire line is divided into three groups of dominant or typical structures, suspension, guide, and anchor towers. For each group of structures, the conventional methodology is applied, but considering the specific values of tower surge impedance of each group, geometric characteristics, and specific attractive width. 
we have three different backflash overrators. First, associated with group one, suspension towers. Second, associated with group two, Gaia towers. And third, associated with group three of structures, anchored towers. The figures shows the overvoltages arising across the lower left insulator string due to a direct strike to the tower top, considering the three distinct typical towers of the 230 kV line under analysis, and assuming tower foot impedance values of 10, 20 and 40 ohms. As seen, the suspension towers present the higher peak values of overvoltages in comparison with both Gaia and Anchor Towers, which in turn show similar peak values. This stems from the higher equivalent surge impedance of the suspension towers. The differences between the voltage curves tend to decrease with increasing the tower foot impedance, possibly because in this case the high value of impulse impedance plays a major role in determining the overvoltage across the line insulators. In this table, it is possible to observe the critical current values for each tower structure, assuming the overvoltage presented on the previous slide, along with the probabilities that the lightning current exceeds the critical current. In this table, delta indicates the relative decrease of this probability for Gaia and anchor towers in comparison with suspension towers. Accordingly, the percentage of first struck peak currents exceeding critical current is decreased, as indicated by the parameter delta. Decreases ranging from about 7% to 30% and 17% to 34% are observed, respectively for the Gaia and Anchor Towers. The observed difference can impact the calculation of the performance of the entire line. The line backflash over rates were calculated using the conventional and proposed methodologies described in previous slides. Table 2 summarizes the obtained results assuming NG equal 5 flashes per square kilometers per year. The backflash over rates obtained for each individual group of typical structures are in agreement with the results obtained previously. The group of anchor towers has the lowest backflash over rate followed by the group of Gaia towers, and finally, the group of suspension towers presents the highest backflash over rate. The line outage rate, estimated by the proposed methodology, is approximately 11.3% lower than that estimated by the conventional methodology. This stems from the better performance of the groups of structures 2 and 3, in comparison with the group 1, which is the dominant and assumed to be the only one in the line performance estimation using the conventional methodology. It is important to emphasize that the difference obtained between the two methodologies is not negligible, being, for example, of the same order of magnitude as the difference obtained for backflash over rate, considering or disregarding the frequency dependence of soil parameters. In this work, we propose a methodology for calculating the lightning performance of transmission lines, which considers not only the dominant tower geometry along the line, but groups of dominant towers according to the proportion of each one. It will show that for different towers and considering the same tower foot impedance, the resulting overvoltage can be significantly different. This difference directly impacts the determination of critical current and the probability of the, it being exceeded. Ultimately, there is a direct impact on the estimated number of line outages. Thank you for your attention.